أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتع علينا فتوه العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعاليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear most respected brothers and sisters and friends I greet you all with the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. And welcome once again to this special program coming to you from the Islamic Forum of Canada, where we share with you this message of mercy from God Almighty to all of His creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty reveals in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra, Subhana ladhi asra bi'abdihi layla min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa al-sami'u al-basir. Glory be to Allah and glorified is God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who took his slave or his servant, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, on this night journey and this bodily journey took him from Mecca, from Masjid al-Haram, the sacred mosque to the distant mosque Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem whose surrounding and place we did blessed and then God Almighty in Sultan Najm said he took him up into the heavens for his meeting, the special meeting with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to continue from where we left off in our program last week and we talked much about, we gave an overview of the events of the Isra and Miraj uh, and uh, we uh, talked about the events at Masjid al-Aqsa where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led the prayer with all the prophets brought back the God Almighty and this, the, this entire event is miraculous and then many miracles took place, many individual miracles took place throughout the event of Isra and Miraj and one of them is God Almighty brought back all the prophets from Adam alayhi salam to Isa alayhi salam, all of them uh, were brought back to Masjid al-Aqsa and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him led them in prayer, establishing his preeminent position as Sayyid al-Mursaleen, the master and leader of all the prophets and messengers of God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This event of Isra and Miraj uh, signaled uh, a, a, a great change in the tide of affairs of humanity. In, in the tide of affairs of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and in the affairs of the Muslim Ummah, his followers, and in the affairs of all of humanity. Many spiritual changes took place on this event of Isra and Miraj, uh, establishing the Prophet ﷺ for the role that he had to perform from that time until the Day of Judgment. And so God Almighty blessed him in this amazing way. Then uh, Jibreel took him up in the heavens. He went, he went to the first heaven, to the second heaven, to the third heaven, up to the seventh heaven and beyond. Uh, he met the different prophets again uh, in each of the heavens. For example, in the first heaven, he met Adam alayhi salam. Then in the seventh heaven, Ibrahim alayhi salam and many others in between. Then after that, 
and he was shown many of the great signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember God Almighty revealed in the Quran, لِنُرِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا So we would show him our signs. We would, we would give him the knowledge of everything. And, and the Prophet ﷺ uh, received the knowledge of creation from God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this night of Isra and Miraj. Then after the seven heaven, he went to, uh, he reached a place called Sidratul Muntaha. Uh, and Surah Najm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions this. Jibril alayhi salam, the angel Jibril, Gabriel is with him. Uh, and he, he is at Sidrat al-Muntaha, where there is the low tree or lotus tree or nabakh tree. That, that is the demarcation point of the farthest limit of the cosmos. It's a demar demarcation point in the sense that no one on, on this side of the Sidrat al-Muntaha can go beyond. So Jibril alayhi salam uh, told the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, Prophet Muhammad, you have to go ahead. You have to proceed on this journey now. Uh, and the Prophet alayhi salatu salam said, uh, you have to follow me. You have to be with me. You have to, you, you've been my companion throughout this journey all this night. Uh, you cannot leave me alone to continue by myself. And Jibreel alayhi salam told the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, uh, everyone has their appointed place. And I cannot go beyond this point. If I were to go beyond this point of Sidratul Muntaha, I will be destroyed. Uh, no one from this side can go beyond this point, and no, none of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the other side can come uh, across this Sidratul Muntaha. This is its, its uh, spiritual significance. But, the, but then Jibreel Islam told the Prophet Muhammad, You, O Muhammad, you can go beyond this point. And then Jibreel pushed the Prophet forward and he uh, traversed, as he said, the Prophet Muhammad in his hadith, indescribable distances, long distances on the, the third mode of transportation for, for this Miraj and Nabi. It's called Raf Raf. The first one was the Burak from Mecca to Jerusalem and then the Mi'raj, which, which the Prophet said it resembled the staircase in its appearance and it, he stepped on it and it ascended into the heavens. That's the Miraj, the second mode of transportation. And the third is the Raf Raf from Sidrat al-Muntaha until his meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet alayhi salam said he traversed indescribable distances in one, one narration, 70,000 veils of light. Uh, the distances the Prophet mentioned, we don't know as of yet what is a veil of light except it's, it's huge distances. And then after that, uh, a special uh, part of the journey, traveling huge distances, he found himself prostrating in front of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there he met with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he conversed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this occasion of Isra and Miraj. So here, the, this conversation took place. Uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says, Imam al-Qurtubi in his... Uh, Tafsir, and he is called Imam al Mufassirin. He is the Imam, the leaders of all the scholars of Tafsir, uh, commentary of the Quran. He described this conversation that I want to share with you today. The, the Prophet Muhammad says, At tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. Uh, greetings to Allah, and all praises and reverence are for Allah. And then God Almighty respond, and inshallah, I would mention in our next segment about this great conversation that took place on this occasion of Isra and Miraj of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. At the Islamic Forum School, we teach Islamic sciences, Arabic language, and Tajweed training. Classes are available for all age groups. It was narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A faithful person cannot have enough of teachings that lead to piety, guidance, until it leads him to paradise. It was also narrated, Scholars are the inheritors of the sciences of the prophets of Allah. It was also narrated, Words of wisdom are the beloved of the faithful. It 
was narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked why he fasts Mondays. He said, it was the day I was born. <laughs> As was narrated in Hadith Qudsi, those whom are engaged in my mentioning, I am with them, as if I was their companion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, those who mention Allah profusely are given by Allah forgiveness and great reward. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Talabul ilm faridatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslimatin. That the pursuit of knowledge, seeking of Islamic knowledge is incumbent, is obligatory in each male Muslim and female Muslim, all Muslims. Uh, this is a duty that you have to do, inshallah. And uh, I want to encourage parents to bring your children and register them for the Islamic school, the weekend Islamic school we have at the Islamic Forum of Canada every Saturday from 10.30 in the morning until 3 p.m. in the afternoon. You need to make that sacrifice. You need to bring children out so that they can get an Islamic education. If you don't make the sacrifice to ensure that your children get an Islamic education, then who can you blame when your children become adult and they don't know to pray, they don't know to read Quran, then who can you blame when they don't practice Islam? Who can you blame when they don't respect you, when they don't make dua for you and so on? As parents, you need to be mindful to ensure your children get an Islamic education and so I invite you to join the educational program programs at the Islamic Forum so you can benefit inshallah. So bring them out and register them. Remember the, the Maulid or family program that we have every Saturday this evening 6 p.m. Uh, for you to bring your family out and your dua requests. If you have any dua you'd like us to make on your behalf, please let us know and we'll be most happy to oblige and to do that. If you'd like to sponsor and support the program financially, please contact the Islamic Forum for further details. Uh, I was blessed this past week with uh, a visit to Trinidad in the Caribbean uh, for a lecture tour of uh, several places in the country. I just uh, got back from that successful uh, lecture tour of Trinidad and Tobago. Alhamdulillah, it was the rece reception is very great. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that, and I thank all those who supported the program. We, we had lectures in different parts of the country, from the north of the country to the central region, to down south, uh, in many places, and in, in all the different venues, alhamdulillah, wonderful reception. I want to thank uh, all the organizers of the program, especially Brother Ashmeed and Ashnad Foundation uh, for uh, organizing this program. And there are many uh, murids and students who work very hard for the program. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them. Also, I met many of the Muslims in Trinidad and Tobago who know Muslims here, relatives and friends, and they convey their salams to you. I don't want to mention all the names, it would be too many, but salams uh, to, uh, to you from the Muslims of Trinidad and Tobago. Those that they know and those that they do not know, they wanted me to convey salams to the Muslim community here in Canada. So salams from the Muslims of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, today I will be spe speaking at IMO, the, I'll be the guest speaker for their Mirage program at IMO in Toronto. Uh, if you are available, please come out to IMO for the special Miraj and Nabi program today. Remember the welcome to Ramadan dinner uh, we are having at Islamic Forum on Sunday, June the 14th. Uh, please get your uh, tickets for that uh, program for yourself, your family members, your relatives, your friends, including non-Muslim friends. You can bring them to the Islamic Forum, this special occasion, inshallah. For the information uh, on these different programs can be found on the Sheikh Faisal Facebook page uh, or the Islamic Forum website, inshallah. You can get forward information there. So we look forward to seeing you at these different programs. And there are several other lectures I'll be delivering in different locations. Uh, and all the information, the details are on the Sheikh Faisal Facebook page that uh, you should go to get forward information. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you as we continue to observe and to celebrate and commemorate this great miraculous occasion of Miraj Nabi. <laughs>
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, O you who believe, when you hear the call to Jumu'ah, hasten to make the mentioning of Allah. It was narrated that Rasulullah said, Friday is the best of days that the sun has risen on. And he also said, There is an hour on the day of Jumu'ah, or Jumu'ah, during which the prayer of a Muslim is answered. It was narrated that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, A hajj that is accepted by Allah cannot be rewarded with less than paradise. It was also narrated, Those who visit me in my grave and make salam to me, Allah will return my soul to me so that I can return their salam. It was also narrated, He who makes hedge, and during which does not transgress in word or action, will be forgiven his sins, to become sinless like a newborn. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I want to invite you to come next Friday to the Islamic Forum for this special Juma program. Juma starts 1 p.m. every Friday throughout the year. Uh, we invite you to come out to the Islamic Forum and tell others to come as well to join us for Juma on Fridays at the Islamic Forum. The Mirage miraculous event is something that uh, strengthens us spiritually and inspires us in our relationship with the Prophet وسلم, when we see this way in which this unique way in which God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored him. And I talked in previous program of I, I placed into chronological sequence the different events which took, took place before the Surah and Miraj so that we can appreciate uh, the greatness of this honor that was bestowed on the Prophet ﷺ. And God Almighty reveals about this in the Quran, in, in uh, Surah Al-Isra, uh, about the, uh, the, the event, the first part of the event, the Miraj from uh, Mecca to Jerusalem, uh, the Isra, and then in Surah Al-Najm, the Miraj from Jerusalem to the heavens and beyond. The... After the Sidrat al-Muntaha, this farthest limit of the cosmos, then the Prophet ﷺ traveled uh, that huge distance until he found himself. He found himself in the presence of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, prostrate in front of the throne of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for his meeting with Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ uh, had this uh, divine vision. He saw Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So he said, "The Prophet ﷺ." Uh, and once again, we the, the reference where this is Imam Qurtubi and many other scholars that have written about this event. The Prophet said, "At tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu." Greetings to Allah and all praise and reverence are due to Allah. Then God Almighty responded to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Sun Prophet Muhammad. He said, Assalamu alayka, ayyuhan nabiyu, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy and blessings of Allah is with you. Then the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Sun, the Prophet Muhammad uh, said, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Peace be upon us upon, and upon all the righteous servants. I bear witness that there is no deity to be worshipped but Allah. 
And then God Almighty responded, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger, the servant and messenger of Allah, God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the angels that were present there, uh, the Hamlatul Arsh, those carrying the, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are present with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they all said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Oh Allah, shower your blessings on Muhammad and on the family of Muhammad. Subhanallah. Now, you would recognize these words of the conversation, the, the divine conversation between the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the Prophet met with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Miraj al Nabi. And those words of the conversation are the words of Tahiyat, the Tahiyat that we recite in our Salah. When we sit down in Tashahud for, uh, for uh, Salah, we recite these words. And these are the words of the conversation between the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Great indeed. And so the Prophet alayhi salatu salam said, As salatu miraj al mu'mineen. The, the prayer, prayer, ritual prayer, salah or namaz, this is the miraj of the believer. This is your ascension to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another narration, the Prophet said that. When you are in sajda, when you're prostrating to God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is your closest position to God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, you ask of Him what you want. You make your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prostration. The closest position you can be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the salah, the miraj al mu'min. Then again in the hadith Qudsi, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala converse with us in our salah, that when we recite Surah Al-Fatiha, God Almighty responds to us. We say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. God Almighty said, Hamadani Abdi. We say, all praise is you to Allah, Lord of the worlds. God Almighty says, my servant, my slave has praised me. And so he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmideen, and so on. Athna alayya Abdi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Majadani Abdi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hada. Abdi, God Almighty is responding to us as we recite the verses of Surah Al-Fatiha. And when we make the dua at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, abdi wa li abdi ma sa'al. This is between me and my servant. And my servant shall have what he or she asks for. So God Almighty responds to us. The conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our salah. What about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Isra'an Miraj and his conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a great event of Isra'an Miraj, this miraculous event. I, I wrote a book on this, uh, this event, uh, Miraj and Nabi, uh, a large book with much more details. I'm just summarizing, uh, sharing with you, with you some snippets from this event. But there's so much more that you need to learn and to know about the Isra'an Miraj, this uh, great event in Indeed, this miracle, the, one of the greatest miracles that was given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, one of the greatest miracles that humanity has ever witnessed is the miracle of Isra and Miraj. I want now, when the Prophet Ali returned back to Mecca the following morning after this event, and he said when he returned that the same night to his bed, his bed was still warm as when he left it when the angel Gabriel, Gabriel or Gabriel took him when he returned. Then the next morning he went to the Kaaba and he told the people of the Isra and Miraj, they denied. They didn't want to accept. They said, that, how can you go to Jerusalem and come back on the same night? It takes us many, many days to go there uh, and so on. They, they, uh, they didn't believe in him, obviously. And now he's telling them about the Miraj, they didn't, they didn't accept that. And then uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, who uh, was not there, he heard about it after he had this tremendous response. But the reason why the people of Mecca did not believe in what the Prophet Ali was telling them is that he was saying he actually went on this journey. It's not a vision. It's not a dream he had, because anyone can have a vision. That's not entirely possible. But he's telling them he physically left Mecca, went to Jerusalem, went into the heavens, met with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and returned on the same night. That's what he's telling them. They couldn't accept that. They knew what he was telling them. 
this is the proof that this event was an actual physical journey of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam. The angels, all of them are invoking salat and salams on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Let us try to recite salawat and durood as much as we can to love the Prophet on this great occasion. Amen. Help us make this dream a reality. We need your financial support. Please, donate generously. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. The blessed month of Sha'aban Al Mu'adham is here with us. Today it's the first program for the month of Sha'aban. And what a wanderful transition this is. We talked about Miraj and Nabi, and now the first program for the month of Sha'aban. And Sha'aban is described as the month of Rasulullah. Rajab, the month of Allah, Sha'aban, the month of Rasulullah, and followed by Ramadan. The month for the believers, the month of the believers. So three important months, and now we are in the month of Sha'aban. There are many things we should do in the month of Sha'aban. Fasting, the Prophet used to fast in Sha'aban more than in any other time, except Ramadan, uh, extra salah, dhikr, dua, and so on. And all of these things we will put on uh, our Facebook page. You can go to Sheikh Faisal Facebook page for foreign information as to what you should do in the month of Sha'aban. I just want to alert you today that there, this, the month of Sha'aban is here with us and you should try to do as much as you can do and recite much salawat uh, in this month of Rasulullah, the month of the Prophet Muhammad. Remember, they welcomed the Ramadan dinner uh, on June the 14th. Uh, the Nisf Sha'aban program will be Monday night, June the 14th. First, inshallah, the first Tarawih is expected to be on Wednesday night, June the 17th, inshallah. Contact the Islamic Forum for further details. Remember your monthly pledge, your donation, your financial donation to the Islamic Forum. We make a special appeal to you today to donate something to the Islamic Forum. Until we meet again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>